And this is important in determining what our return is going to be on that particular stock. Because as we know, uh, there are only two ways that we can get uh, some type of return from a stock. You can either uh, get capital appreciation, a capital gain, meaning the price of the stock went up. Uh, so we look for that, but you can also get um, some type of return of capital to shareholders. And in this case, we're talking in the way of dividends. And so you can have a dividend yield and a capital gain, uh, and that will give you your total return on a particular stock. So that's why the dividend yield is so important to know and understand. Uh, but it gives us an idea of what could we make off that stock just from dividends. And obviously not all companies pay dividends. Uh, a lot of companies, especially now, do not. Uh, dividends are not something that are as common as they used to be. Some of the largest companies in the world do not pay dividends. Amazon does not pay a dividend. Berkshire Hathaway does not pay a dividend. Uh, and this is not necessarily bad for their shareholders because those shareholders can still make money through capital appreciation. Uh, but specifically with Berkshire Hathaway, it brings me to the next part of how capital can be returned to shareholders that I wanted to talk about in this episode, and that is uh, the share repurchase. In a similar way to being able to take money from earnings uh, and pay it back to shareholders in cash in the form of a dividend, uh, what you can also do as a company is you can institute a share repurchase program, or you might also hear them called share buybacks. And what a share buyback is, is uh, in a similar way of taking your uh, retained earnings, taking the earnings that you have in the company uh, and paying them out, you will take earnings that you have and you will repurchase shares of your company stock from the market. Now, what does this do and why is it important? Well, what it does is it decreases the number of shares outstanding in the market. And when you decrease the number of shares outstanding in the market, uh, then what you also do is you increase the per share earnings of the company because uh, they take their earnings divided by the amount of shares that they have outstanding. And so the earnings per share will increase because you decrease the amount of shares that are uh, available in the market. Not only that, when you're talking about the price of a stock, you are talking about the price per share. Well, if you decrease the number of shares, then the price will increase. And so what share repurchases do for the investor is they find this increase in price, this increase uh, in the value of the stock that they hold. And so this shows up as a capital gain. It shows up as an increase in the stock's price, uh, but it's really a way that firms are distributing capital to their shareholders. Um, and the reason that they would do this instead of just paying a straight dividend is because dividends are something that investors come to expect. Uh, dividends are something that uh, the stock may hinge heavily on. So if you initiate a dividend, typically you don't want to take that dividend away. Uh, and not only do you not want to take it away, in a lot of cases, investors are going to want you to grow that dividend over time. But the upside of the share repurchase is that it is far more flexible. You can choose given whatever market conditions there are uh, to repurchase shares from the market if you are a particular company and you can repurchase those shares typically what you would want to do is repurchase those shares when the shares are undervalued right uh, because that would be a good use of the firm's capital uh, to buy your undervalued shares and so you, so you buy the undervalued shares thus lifting uh, the per share price for all of your shareholders uh, but you're not tied down to that you're not tied down to share repurchases you're not tied down uh, to doing that over and over and over again you can do it once you can never do it uh, you can say that you're going to do it and not do it and not be in trouble for uh, that yes your investors may not like that uh, but there is no obligation to continue a share repurchase program uh, past what you say uh, or even up to what you say uh, you are going to do. And so uh, share repurchases can provide a lot of flexibility for a company and it's a good way that companies can return uh, capital to shareholders. And uh, like I said, this is something that Berkshire Hathaway likes to take advantage of uh, because they do not pay a dividend. And, and Warren Buffett says all the time, you know, uh, you know, one of the best uses of capital, if you don't have any acquisition target uh, within Berkshire Hathaway, 
If the stock's undervalued, then they will just repurchase their own stock, uh, thus lifting up the value of shareholders, which is what they're trying to do in the first place. So you see the value that can be added there as well. And with a share repurchase, you don't really know um, exactly when the repurchases are going to occur. They tend to actually occur over uh, a period of time, over a particular quarter or multiple quarters. Uh, and you don't know exactly when the firm is repurchasing shares uh, within the daily volume of the stock being traded.